Alright, I've moved outside to the hotel veranda, so is this a little better? I have a direct route okay. to the router. Yeah. Well, now I'm hearing you, but you're, there's zero. Yeah, you get to hear all the horn honks and the everything in the background, so well, that'll help. So, at least uh, I can hear you. Yeah. There was nothing for the last minute. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So this should help. So Yeah, my... my uh, 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 of all the regrets I have for the day, my biggest regret is what I did not do is when we were on this 10 minute bus ride, I should have handed the camera to John to turn on me while I was in a full meltdown gringo rage about Mexico and Mexicans and everything about this whole fucking shit all country and uh, when the entire bus was was absolutely terrified thinking that this enraged gringo that they had Ted Kaczynski on the bus with them and that any minute I was gonna pull out a uh, a, a pistola and start and, and start shooting people on the bus all these nice tranquilo Mexicans uh, were you know were high Hiding behind their cell phones and, and trying to ignore me, having an absolute fucking meltdown. Rage. What was the meltdown about? Well, uh, <laughs> it was this was again. I need to choose my words very carefully. Yeah, this was the single most outrageous, uh, the single most outrageous. Uh, bed and breakfast experience uh, that either one of us have ever had. The, the past three days have not been good, so we were already kind of, you know, a little, you know what I'm saying, yeah. a, a little yeah. primed, and then we hit Tulum, Mexico, and uh, just, uh, it, 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 just all hell broke loose. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> you know, when you're hot and, and tired and all you want to do is jump in a cenote and, and float around and then suddenly everything fucking collapses around your day. And, uh, you know, one of the, it was one of those days. So, uh... I, there, there, there were there were so many things going wrong at, at, at once. You know, trying to do damage control on one thing, and then another thing would happen, and another thing would happen. So uh, anyway, it was. Uh, oops! It was an. It was a. Uh, a <laughs> not not the best travel day. So we don't think what? we. Yeah. Go ahead. I don't think. We're not even sure we ever arrived at where we were even heading because the directions to the bed and breakfast that we gave the taxi driver to, we, we discussed this with three taxi drivers, were six miles from where we were supposed to be. We were six miles off because of the directions that this clueless uh, moron had given us uh, to how to find the place. And, and it's we weren't just going off the website. We had had, in the past 24 hours, we had had two very carefully worded, you know, with explicit instructions how to find the place uh, with the with the host of the uh, bed and breakfast where we were heading to, okay. and okay. they sent us six miles from where. So we so we're working with this taxi driver. So then, what we do is we get the map that they had sent us to get to the Airbnb. So we decided to try that tack. And 
you know, to actually get the map. So we had asked a previous taxi driver, how much are you going to charge us to take us out to this listing? And he told us five dollars. That he was, that it was a five dollar fare, and but we had gotten a new taxi driver, and so we lost him. He went off with another five dollar fare. Are you there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you cut out. Yeah. So you we, got, we. You had to get dumped, and then. Get yeah, we $5 lost the five dollar fare because he told us the place we were looking for was two blocks. The address we were given oh. was two blocks. But he told us where we wanted to go, he would charge five dollars. But we lost him. Huh? Okay, so it, so it, like 30 minutes later, we were back at the taxi stand. So we had already confirmed with the other taxi driver it was a five dollar fare. So we did not ask our second taxi driver what he was going to charge us to take us to the same place that the first taxi driver was going to charge us five dollars for. And so we're driving out there, and the and the taxi driver you was. We didn't check with the second. We did not check with the second taxi he driver. It was going to be thirty bucks. And uh, how much he was going. So well, we've got our fucking luggage, and she, you know that thing you gave me all full. So we get in with him. And he's thoroughly enjoying our story about our drama that we've had. So we give him the fucking map. We're saying, okay, here is the map we have to get to our Airbnb, even though it has nothing whatsoever on any level to do with the address connected to the map. And even though we have been completely fucked on the original address, so we decide, okay, we're going to follow the map. So he takes us on this wild goose chase, and so we get there. He takes us miles outside of town, dumps us off into this absolute, I, I mean, it can only be described as like an Eastern European, uh, like if, if, you, if you pictured some Eastern European industrial zone, you, you know, with this yeah. uh, with this concrete block, it, it, just yeah. picture in yeah. your mind an Eastern European yeah. uh, collapsed, and so he dumps us off at this building. And obviously, what do you think the taxi fare is that he charges us to take $30. us out here? I said about thirty dollars. That is twenty dollars. Oh, okay. So the first guy told us five dollars. And I was dealing with the bags, so John was the one. I actually heard the taxi driver say to John, $20, after the guy before him had said $5. And, and I actually thought while I was dealing with the fucking bags that the taxi driver was joking. Oh. <laughs> Okay. So that was so uh, that was a twenty dollar bill. Then of course we get there, and and of course she sends us to the wrong building. So we get up there. It's on the fourth floor. There's a fourth floor condo, and we start going up this this uh, staircase through this concrete building to the fourth floor. I mean, we were in a third world, just collapsing. Just, just, uh, uh, you know, just imagine Itawania, Peru, yeah. in a four-floor. Put Itawania, Peru, in a four-story condo building. But what was that the correct? Was that in fact the correct place that you? We made, don't uh, know to this control? minute. So we get up oh. there to the apartment. I had already told John that uh, that I am not spending the night here. I said, I said, I don't give a fuck. I am not spending the night here. I'm going back to Tulum and getting a motel room. But he wanted to go check it out. So we get up there. And of course, there's supposed to be a lockbox with the key to the place, which was not there when we got there. There was no fucking lockbox. But it didn't make any difference 
because the place was a hellhole. As I say, uh, imagine Ito, where we stayed in Itoania, Peru, yeah. on the fourth yeah, floor but, of a uh, of a bombed out concrete building. God. It was a yeah. It was like Itoania, Peru meets you know some place in Eastern Europe after the collapse of the Soviet Union. It was kind of like yeah. those two energies. I, I mean, I got this energetic hit off the place. You're always talking about your pendulum. And it was telling me, grab your shit and run like hell from this place. Uh, God Almighty. I was telling John, I said, I feel like a Peruvian shaman and that, I, and, and that one of my enemy shamans has just sent me a dart of snot. That he has taken a blowgun of snot and blown it out his blowgun into my solar plexus. Uh, that's that's the energetic hit that I got. And uh, so we we go back, we retreat back to the main road and get on a fucking bus. So what do you think the price for the bus? We had just taken a $20 taxi ride. So what do you think the bus back into Tulum was? How much? It should have been about six, I mean, like $2, but it, it was must have been 75 more. cents. Oh, yeah, I was going to say 60 cents. Uh, say, yeah. Well, there were two of us, so it was a dollar fifty. For the two of us, yeah, yeah. it was a dollar fifty yeah. to go back uh, on the uh, on the bus. And of course, I, you know, I was asking guys at the bus. No, it was the taxi driver who was at the bus station looking for gringos. So uh, we asked the taxi driver out there how much he would charge to take us back to Tulum. And yeah. what do you think he said? A uh, couple dollars. Five dollars. Yeah. It was five dollars. What the original cabbie, the fare is five dollars. So we took the, uh, we waited five more minutes and took the bus back for a dollar fifty. So it was on that bus ride, that twenty-minute, uh, probably fifteen-minute bus ride. If, if, if I, if I had thought of taking the camera out of my pocket and handing it to John and said, just, just film this, and I went into an absolute fucking meltdown rage about all of it, uh, about Tulum, about Mexico, about Mexicans, they, uh, about my uh, fucking opinion of the, their fucking shithole country, everybody in it. Uh, it, it, it was one of, you know, it was one of the classic meltdown uh, enraged Karens. Uh, and I'm very sorry that I did not have that film because now I've calmed down quite a bit. And uh, so we came back into Tulum and I uh, got a very nice hotel, which is what we should have done from the very beginning. We should have gotten on a fucking bus, come into Tulum, gotten off the bus, and, and, and looked around and said, that one looks nice and gone into that hotel and gotten a couple of rooms in the hotel. Yeah. But you had some kind of, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know. Um, you know, anytime you're traveling in a, another country, let's say you should be prepared for such things. I don't see why, I mean, I don't see what prompted such an outrage. Oh, God. So it started off, our day started off at our, we, we, we've been trying to make the last three nights in the bed and breakfast that we rented, we, we've just tr been trying to keep our sense of humor about it. Uh, like for instance, n not only was there not a coffee maker in the, in the bed and breakfast, there was no coffee maker. There was no coffee pot, there were no coffee filters, there were no coffee cups provided. No coffee cups. Uh, obviously there was no coffee, not even Nescafe, there was no sugar, there was no creamer. 
so uh, we had no way of uh, thank God. Remember, I brought that. Remember, I packed that bag of coffee. Yeah. So what I did the first day is I crushed a brownie in the bottom of the cup. <laughs> One of, one of those brownies I made, you know, that knocked my yeah. tooth out of my mouth. So I crumbled uh, up the brownie to sweeten my first day's cup of coffee. Thank God I had, uh, I had uh, brought that bag of coffee or I would have been completely, we were miles outside of town, outside of oh, Morello. Oh, really? And, uh, well, how far was it to a coffee shop? But oh, no, no, it, it would have been, it would have been horrendous. And, uh, so that got me through the, we, we found two soup tureens that we could use as coffee cups. And uh, so today I get up, so we're getting ready to make our trip to, to Tulum. And I go and out to the, our, our propane stove and I turn on the stove and you know exactly what happened when I turned on the stove. Oh, you're out of propane. Yes, that was, so that was the there. first five minutes of today. And it has been uh, straight downhill ever since. So, uh, oh. Oh. no, it's been one of those days that, I mean, John's, I think, is one minute away from just going back to New Mexico, just completely throwing in the towel on the whole trip. So uh, he, is, he is so livid right now. And we're doing pretty good. We're, we're not taking it out on each other. Alaska, so far, we've made it from Friday. What is tonight? Tuesday. Okay. We are we are not blaming each other for these so, fuck ups. We're in it okay. together. But uh, it's uh, I think we're we're probably going to spend one more night on the Mexican side of the border tomorrow night and go on into Belize the day after tomorrow. And if things don't radically improve in Belize, that it will not surprise me one bit if John says, I have had about as much of this as I can stand, and uh, gets on a fucking plane and flies back home. Uh, stay, right? What's that? Because you're... You would stay because you'll be in Belize where you really want uh, to. Yeah, I would probably give it a few more days, but I, I would not, I would not completely rule out, I would not 100% rule out that I'm going to be back in Texas one week from tonight. I'm not, I would not absolutely rule that out. I'm looking at the weather forecast in Texas tonight, and uh, it is 78 degrees where I am right now. I'm sitting here barefooted with no shirt on. Um, you know, it's 30 degrees or less uh, here. I, uh, freezing, icy rain. But, you know, I'm warm inside. Do you know what the, the low is at my place Saturday night in New York? No. 14 oh, below York? zero. Oh my god. <laughs> 14 oh, degrees god. below zero. Oh god. It's no, going I, I, it, it's going to be the coldest night. Saturday night's going to be the coldest night in the state of New York in five years. It's going to be the coldest February 4th in over 100 years. Oh my God. 14 degrees below zero is the, uh, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not quite ready to head back to the U.S. I'm going to give it, but if, uh, here's the man right here. So I'm talking to my friend Chris about what is the chance that you and I are actually going to, I don't mean you and I, per John's here listening, what is the chance the that we're not, the go, that we're not to going to, that we're both going to be back in the United States well before March 3rd? Is there any chance of that? Okay, John says he's committed. John says he's committed for the full distance. Belize, yes, Belize is looking much better. <laughs> 
So John, uh, John is, is, is uh, he, he's the eternal optimist that we're going to have a big turnaround uh, in, in Bailey's. So it will be better than we ever imagined, don't you think? Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, you're talking to me or him. I'm talking, talking to that. you. I mean, obviously, yeah. as soon as we cross that Belize border, and out of we're, we're out of Mexico, we no longer have to change money, and the and yeah. the national language is English. And the what? The the language is English. And the what? So we will be speaking oh, English, yeah. spending gringo oh, dollars yeah. speaking English. So uh, yeah. it should be better than we ever could imagine starting in two right. or three days. And, uh, so Wait, there you go. You can't leave tomorrow? How long does it take? We, we we technically could be in Bailey's tomorrow. We could be at Aubrey. It is indeed a possibility we to could, be in Corazal. Yeah, in we Corazal could be in Corazal, Bailey's, uh, tomorrow. I am still politicking that we spend a night in Bacalar. I still want to, with, with all that I've gone through, I still want to spend one night in Bacalar, where, which means we could almost walk to the fucking border. But one more Mexican bus ride. So I, I am, uh, I am politicking that we're going to give Bacalar, Mexico, one night. What is that? A ruins or what? I've never heard of it. Bacalar. It's a big lake. What? It's inland. It's not. A, it's not a beach town. It's inland, about 20 miles. Huh. B a c a l a r. It's on a. Uh, on a on a big freshwater lake. Hmm. Okay. So uh, yeah, we are. Uh, I for some reason, don't ask me why. I want to spend. I want to give this this shithole country one more chance. Well, I I would. I'm and with... and if we will literally be twenty minutes. Where, I'm, where I want to stay tomorrow night, on the very southern, southern tip of this big lake, we will be 20 minutes from Belize. So if we spend tomorrow night, and tomorrow is anything like today, we will wake up, what will that be, Thursday morning, and we will be 20 minutes from Belize. From so, a place where you entry, I mean a, a, border, a border entry? Yeah, it's the main Mexico Bailey's entry, which yeah, should oh, be, yeah. which, which well, should, be should be fairly that. painless. Yeah, you should do that for sure. Yeah, then we'll go on uh, down to Ombre Greece, and then from there to Calker, and uh, once we get tired of the beach, then we'll head up into the hills. Yeah. Just San Ignacio. You remember um, my friend's name there? Bob Teitler. 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 Yes. So we will look up Bob and Key Calker and see if he has any inside recommendations about if you had three now three weeks to spend in Belize, how would you spend it? And get Bob's. I have no idea if he is there or not. Yeah. I mean, I could try calling him. I get you know, I, I could try. Uh, um, but, I mean, there's a good chance. It's the middle of the winter. It's a good chance. But that he's there. Well, so anyway, that is the uh, that is the uh, the update from the Gran Aventura in Mexico. Oh well. Also, at Key Copper, is go into. I guess you said there was only one bakery or a bunch of bakeries. You said there were a bunch of mm -hmm. dive shops. There, yeah, there's a one major bakery in Calgary. Yeah. But anybody yeah. at that bakery will know Junie, and you know what I'm saying. Yeah. They so. would know Bob Tytler, yeah, because he's been going for 20 years. And we're both fans of bakeries anyway, so we would be going to that bakery anyway. So I will okay. uh, try to meet up. So how was the dog? 
He's fine. We, you know, it's <laughs> man, as cold as it is, it is, I've been taking him out like you do every night, and then it's been so cold that it takes me till two o'clock to get out of my bathrobe and put huge clothes on. You know, a yeah. heavy jacket and all that, and his little his little coat. I'm so glad I have his little furry coat. And um, we take a walk, and um, he been going potty every day and um, so yeah I take him out in the morning to pee a little shorty and we go later oh, no, I don't even think I took my anyway and you know I think he gets a little depressed but I'm he's sleeping on my bed and he, last night little Sheba got up like and looked at him like really you know because she usually sleeps on the bed now Shakti doesn't care she gets up and like she usually does in the middle of the night and you know she doesn't she's fine with a guest dog but little Sheba is like huh, you know really but but you know they they were they were both there all night so that's pretty cool and his walks he enjoys I mean it's pretty darn cold out but um I, I made myself walk, you know, for 20 minutes or so, and he enjoys it. He well, Santo, he doesn't seem to mind the cold. I mean, he's been, I've seen him out in nine degrees. And yeah, uh, it, he doesn't seem phased by it. So, so I made, you know, it's good for me, too. So I made sure I had plenty of clothes on and a hat and my heaviest jacket and, and do more than just a teeny bit. Uh, he wants to eat all the time. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah, he's yeah, gaining yeah. some weight, so we'll have to put him on a diet this summer. Yeah, yeah just, missing my I dog. Think, I think he gets a little depressed, you know, but, um, but he, he's fine. You know, All right, well, I am heading out for margarita number three. Uh, this was a three margarita day. I'm starting to sober up from the first two. So it's now 8 o'clock, and they're actually having some live music down at the Margarita Bar starting here in one minute. So I am heading down to actually listen to some live music and have my third margarita. Good for you. Enjoy and um, be chill and uh, keep me posted. <laughs> yeah. All right, darling. Take care. See ya. Bye. Bye.